How dare you return a guitar to me? Ruining my perfect reputation here. Oh, welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. That's right, somebody wanted to return this guitar. Now, it's not like a, a return return. I actually have a little thing on the back of my business card here. It says if you're ready for something new and you want a quick and easy selling experience, I buy back any guitar plus many others. I'll even help you find your next piece of gear. Now keep in mind, these are the old business cards that I used to use when I was more of like a guitar dealer. But since I use these old business cards up for the fret spacers, sometimes people will still take me up on that offer. So I was having a, a bad day one day and then I got this email that said refund requested. It's like, oh, I don't see that very often because I think I've had maybe five guitars returned in total, including this one. And my general return policy is no returns because I go above and beyond what any other dealer does to describe the instruments. And the only reason why no other dealers list guitars like I do is because it takes way too long and it's way too expensive. For example, if I paid myself minimum wage for all my editing time, the buying time and all that, this isn't profitable. It's only worthwhile for me because I don't have to work a traditional job. And I get to have fun doing it. And I feel that I provide something for the world this way. Even if it's just within my niche hobby. So what guitar came back to me? Let's find out. It appears to be some sort of a flying V, but I don't remember sending out any flying V <laughs> Gibson case. This has to be uh, one of the most humble returns that I have ever received. The guy said the guitar just wasn't for him. He wanted to know if I would take it back. He didn't even want the full money back and he made a bunch of changes and modifications to the guitar. So let's go ahead and go over this because this basically counts as the new review for this one. This originally went out in a SKB hard shell case. It didn't have the Gibson case. I'm not really sure what happened to it, but hey, Gibson case for me, that's okay. Yeah, it's that 50th anniversary flying V, but notice. We've got gold covers on it now, and we've got different knobs. It's like been returned to more traditional looks. So yeah, this is interesting. I think I'm not quite sure why he wanted to return it the way he did. Oh my goodness. He actually got it a correct case. I think it's missing the case shroud that says guitar of the month. I mean, it's a little bit beat up, but it has that crushed velvet type feel to it. Wow. Oh, yeah, I guess he didn't tell me about this. He moved the strap button and he installed the Steinberger leg rest. So from what I understand, I mean, he took a little chunk of the wood out right there, but now you can actually sit and play this thing like this. So if you don't like playing in the classical style, you now have that new option. Oh, and he also restringed it from the top wrapping to under wrapping. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this one to the workbench just to verify that he didn't, you know, swap out all the parts for Epiphone or something. That's something you got to be careful with when taking a return. <laughs> this dumb thing came back to me. All right, so we've got a Seymour Duncan in the neck and a DiMarzio in the bridge. That's what it originally was. So it just looks like he swapped out the pole pieces for gold ones and added the gold covers. So I, I think that's an upgrade because it makes this guitar look like what it kind of originally did when it was new. You could remove the leg rest if you didn't want it, but I'm just going to leave it be. It's kind of a nice little feature to have. Yeah, so it all looks good to me. Now we just gotta make sure it still works. Which I doubt will be a problem, but you know, gotta be sure. <laughs>
So this one's coming back up for sale. I'll leave a link in the description in case you're interested in it this time around. I mean, some of these modifications, I mean, drilling and routing out some of your guitar on the side devalues it. Moving your strap button into the neck devalues it. But, you know, getting the added bonus of gold covers, that's cool. Getting an original styled case. So I think anyways, you know, the add-ons versus the devaluations, they about even out. But it makes this a much more desirable guitar on the used market. Maybe next time, buddy. But now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and draw our winner from our giveaway last time. Grab our URL, go to random comment selector, filter comments with US, let's find our winner. Congratulations Reggie Owens! You have three days to claim your prize. Now we've got a few of them to box up here. This guitar, I'm pretty happy that I tried it out. It sold really quick. I initially had it listed at $8.99, but then I was like, eh, it's kind of beat up. Why hold out for top value? So I dropped it very shortly after listing it to uh, $7.49 because I felt that was a very fair price for this guitar. So somebody else can love him. <laughs> this was a fun guitar. I loved everything about it except for the way it sounded. You'll even notice that I dropped that pickup like almost all the way down to get it to stop being so bright sounding. And I got a few uh, specs wrong about these. When researching for this video, I could not find the original Gibson listing for this. But as soon as I post the video, oh yeah, then it shows up in the Google search and you can still see it through the back doorway. So it's actually a maple basswood maple sandwich instead of maple poplar maple. Like it normally is. And I said mahogany center block, they're maple center blocks. As far as what the neck is, it's a very close and closed grain wood. That's what I can see. Because some people, including myself, were thinking this was maple, but even the official Gibson spec sheet says mahogany. So it must just be some sort of really light colored mahogany. So I'll try not to think down about this model and still try that 335 version of this one. But I think I'm going to be a little bit more picky since I've already done the Midnight Blue, which is my favorite version. I want to find one of those trapeze tailpiece 335s in black. I think that'll be worthwhile reviewing. But let's go ahead and get this one packed up here. And for our last boxing of the day, this one didn't actually get a separate review and demo because, well, I've already talked about Firebrand, the Pauls, and this one, I mean, it's pretty much a project guitar. It still has the original pickups, but everything else has pretty well been replaced. I'm pretty sure the pickups have been rewound, potentially even. Either that or the tape around the coils has just came loose. But I got this as part of a trade from a fan of the show. It's kind of funny, he came over the same day Robert Baker was here. He was kind of slightly starstruck seeing both of us in the same room. So that was a fun day. So I took this guitar and that Wine Red Custom and trade for, for that P90 Les Paul. You can watch that review and demo here. I think he got the better end of the deal, but I ended up doing okay on these as well. Now, funny that we're giving away one of these gig bags. I told the guy I would include a uh, padded gig bag. Well, Kahai is moving on to a new home too. Hopefully this guy enjoys this guitar. I feel kind of bad. I'm actually a day late getting these things shipped out. It's because I had printer issues. I had bought a new little white printer and it lasted maybe four days before just not recognizing the ink anymore. I just got some ink for this one. I hate paying $60 for the ink cartridges when you could get the brand new printer with the ink for a hundred bucks. It was the last time I bought ink for one of these HP OfficeJet 6962s. It just stopped working like slightly after I put new ink in it. Ever since that day, I just buy new printers every time, but unfortunately the store I get these from stopped carrying this one. So I had no choice this time. So let's hope this thing works. And thankfully it did. So I'm back up and running for shipping guitars. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Troglies Guitar Show and we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.